Today, I'm talking about the New Balance 1080 version 10 after 100 miles. Thirteen point two six miles on the double for today, about nine minutes forty five seconds per mile on average, one hundred and thirty nine beats per minute on average between the two runs running both to and from work in the New Balance ten eighty version ten. And with today's miles, I got to the one hundred mile mark. Now, before I get into my detailed thoughts about this shoe after one hundred miles, I do want to go over some disclosures. This is a pair of shoes that was sent to me by Roadrunner Sports, but however. Neither they nor New Balance is paying me. No one's paying me to use the shoe or to make this video. No one's going to get a chance to see any of this footage or prove my thoughts. So you guys get a chance to see this video on YouTube. Now with the disclosures out of the way, let's talk about the New Balance 1080 version 10 after 100 miles. Now this is a high mileage shoe that I have been thoroughly enjoying. And in fact, my highest mileage week ever was last week. And I think in large part, thanks to this shoe, it was just absolutely phenomenal to have. But I also want to mention that I've been running really high mileage in this shoe for uh, some perspective in terms of some of the other thoughts and critiques I might have about this shoe as well. So keep everything kind of like, yeah, I might have some things that I noticed about the shoe, but it was also during my highest mileage week ever. I ran uh, a little bit over 80 miles last week. So previously my highest mileage week was probably like 72 and a half or so. Um, so hitting 80 was a major milestone for me. I've been running a lot of low heart rate, easy miles. And even so getting to 80 was something I was pretty proud of and able to do it in this shoe. Now, the way that this shoe feels, I was very excited about it at first. It was my first time running in a 1080, so I wasn't really sure what to expect. I knew it would be more of the high mileage shoe, the kind of shoe that you take for your recovery runs or your long, slow distance runs, those days when you're trying to either build mileage on the week to highest levels that you've been to or build mileage on the longest runs and trying to extend what your farthest runs are. That's what this shoe is for, and that's exactly how I used it. And the way that I think it feels is that it's very exciting because I've been a big fan of the Beacon since it came out last year. Absolutely loved that shoe. Absolutely loved version two as well. The New Balance 1080 V10, I feel like has a lot of that same kind of feel to it. It's like a Beacon, but if you added a little bit of like React foam to the bottom, because it's got a little bit of bounciness to it as well, that makes it a little bit different than the Beacon 2. And the other thing that's really nice about this shoe in terms of the way that it's supposed to be used is that there's an ortholite insole in it as well. Nice and soft when you're just walking around when you first put in the, your foot in the shoe. Very nice step in feel, but on those higher mileage days, uh, definitely felt really great to have that. Because as I was racking up miles, I definitely started to feel a little bit of uh, a foot pain and that's the foot pain that those of you guys who've been watching for a while, uh, it's let's just call it my foot issue. Something that I get when I'm in more intense portions of training as I'm getting ready for a marathon or during higher mileage weeks. Something that some of you guys have been calling a Morton's aroma, but in any event in like the ball of my foot, right around this area, sometimes I get a little bit of pain. Um, and I started to notice that yesterday I had a 12 mile run, about two hours on feet. Uh, that I, it bothered me very slightly. I noticed that it was there. It wasn't to the point like other times where I've had to stop and like take off the shoe, other shoes, um, not this shoe, but it hasn't, wasn't that bad. But I definitely noticed it for a couple of miles. I also noticed it today on my second run home for a very short amount of time. It was very fleeting, but just to let you guys know, it was something that was there. 
Something that I definitely noticed that I did yesterday and today was I was looking for some of the thicker socks in my closet uh, just to give myself that little extra bit of padding on the bottom. Uh, and that's why I think that the insole that's very soft on the 1080 V10 is very welcome and very useful in this shoe because you're going to be using it for those higher mileage times. Now, I don't, I'm not knocking the shoe for that foot issue that I've been feeling. I think that's something that's unique to me, something that's been going on with me for chronically, maybe almost like the two years, maybe like a year and a half now. So something that does come up from time to time, but just wanna let you guys know that I was experiencing that just a little bit. Not something that I think most people will experience unless you also have the same type of issue that I have. Now, the other thing that I'll talk about is wear and tear on, on the shoe. And uh, as far as the upper goes, it's holding up really well. In the toe box area, it's really stretchy. I think on the website, when they describe it, they describe the shoe as having a booty construction, but I don't think that's quite accurate. In the toe box area, from kind of like the arch of your foot forward, it's very stretchy, uh, very pliable material, feels very nice. But from like the midfoot cage all the way back, it's a little bit stiffer of a material, like a more, a very reinforced fabric type of material. So uh, a little bit more structure there. And it has been working out great. Everything's holding up fine. The tongue is just a regular standard tongue, not super thin, not super padded, just kind of in the middle. I've been enjoying it as well. The one thing that I have noticed is that in this notch that's right here, where your kind of ankle sits, it, on both my ankles, when I'm just walking around in the shoe, I will feel this in here. And every once in a while I thought, you know, is this shoe starting to chafe me? I'm not sure. But as I would start, once I would start running, that kind of sensation went away. Uh, so I don't think it was really an issue. But if you're the type of person where like the cut of the shoe around your ankle is a big issue, that's something that I might kind of keep an eye on. Now, turning to the midsole and outsole, uh, there's just, tons of this fresh foam and this formulation in this shoe is New Balance's Fresh Foam X, which again, I think is a little bit bouncier than for example, ground contact fresh foam or fresh foam ground contact, the fresh foam that's in the beacon. So it's a little bit of a different formulation, but it definitely feels very similar. The two definitely feel like related foams. Uh, and this has been treating me very, very well. The outsole though, has been wearing a little bit more than I would expect. So the one thing that I will note is that there's part of exposed foam that you're running directly on. It's in the midfoot area. And that part is kind of wearing a little bit. And it's actually wearing in a manner reminiscent to the way that React foam, when you're running on exposed portions of that kind of wear, it gets kind of like wrinkly and pruney, like when you've been in the bath for a little bit too long. So I'm starting to see a little bit of that in the exposed foam that's down here. And then the rubber, everything's holding up really well. I'm just seeing a little bit more wear in these grooves than I would kind of expect. Nothing that alarms me, nothing that makes me think the shoe's falling apart, but just I am seeing a lot more uh, wear than I would expect. I see some in the normal areas that I normally see lots of wear, right here where uh, the outer part of my heel tends to hit. Not seeing a ton in the midfoot area, right here, kind of where that pain is in my foot. Uh, I could still see a lot of the grooves in the rubber, but it is starting to wear down just a little bit. But I'm also seeing a little bit of wear on the uh, lateral side of the foot right here, which I do sometimes get in some shoes, not all shoes, but I'm seeing a little bit of that here. And other than that, I think that the rubber's holding up really well. So I'd say it's doing a, average job in terms of the outsole wear pattern, but the important part is how is the midsole doing? The midsole feels just fantastic. Now the one last thing that I'll kind of say about this shoe is that while I think it's a just absolutely fantastic, long distance, high mileage running shoe, uh, it started out feeling pretty heavy in hand in terms of like it's heavier than it looks. When I first started running in it, I didn't really notice that heaviness at all. I felt like the shoe felt really well balanced and it wasn't an issue. Definitely felt like a heavier shoe than say like a daily trainer, but not to the extent that it would be an issue. Still not an issue, but the shoe seems to be feeling a little bit heavier over time. Now granted, again, take that with a grain of salt because I do think that my legs are starting to get very tired from all this mileage. It just might be that my legs are feeling a little bit more tired as the miles are starting to rack up and that cumulative fatigue is starting to build. But I do feel like the shoe has started to get a little bit heavier or I've noticed the weight a little bit more. It's not always there, but sometimes every once in a while, I'll kind of notice and think this shoe is a little bit on the heavy side. So something to keep in mind, but again, uh, I've been using it for high mileage. 
But then again, you're supposed to be using this shoe for high mileage as well. So something that I do definitely keep an eye on. Now, I haven't only run slow paces in this shoe. There have been time where I've had a little bit of faster paces in there. Uh, I'm low heart rate training and I'm start trying to stay in the low heart rate range. So the times that I do kind of pick it up aren't that extended. So a lot of times it'll just be running on a downhill or if, if I've got a stretch where my heart rate is just feeling really strong and steady, uh, I could pick up the pace a little bit uh, without getting my heart rate too kind of excited. And in those situations, the shoe has done really well. I wouldn't necessarily use it for like my speed work days, but it's not just a low and slow shoe. I think that it can be used for a lot of people as their daily trainer if you're looking for something that has a little bit more cushion in it then I think this could definitely fit as an option for you. So those are my thoughts on the New Balance 1080 version 10. If you have any questions about it or if you've been running in it as well, let me know in the comments. I'd love to know what you guys think. Uh, before I go, I do wanna remind you guys about the charity run for this week. This week it's Gavin May, who's running the Memphis Marathon Weekend and raising money for St. Jude's Children's Hospital. I was happy to donate $70 to Gavin's fundraising efforts and I'll post a link in the description in case you'd like to learn more. One other thing, I got this in the mail today. I got a thank you card from someone who was a charity runner of the week earlier, it's John Henry, uh, who was raising money for Team for Kids, the New York Roadrunners organization uh, that helps expose, I always say expose and kids and it always kind of feels weird. That, um, provides opportunities for young kids to experience running in a positive way at an early age. Uh, and he just ran the New York and the Berlin marathons. And he sent me a thank you card with some photographs of him from the run and letting me know that he's gonna be raising money again for New York Roadrunners in 2020 when he goes to run London. I, I know I certainly don't expect this kind of thing to come from people when I donate. That's not why I do it. Frequently, most of the times, I don't even get like a, a response, like an email response or anything. And that's completely fine. But it was really nice to get this in the mail. So thanks, John, and congratulations on your fantastic fundraising efforts and also for finishing those two marathons. Great job. So that's all I have for today, everybody. Thanks so much for making it all the way to the end of the video, and I will see you guys in the next one. Yo, what's going on?